Welcome to BeatSource Basics. My name is Mojax and on this episode we're getting into the basics of BeatSource itself. We are proud to be integrated with all the major DJ software platforms and so on this series over time we will be doing similar episodes for each of those platforms showing you how you can incorporate BeatSource into your workflow whatever software you use. For this episode though we're starting off with Serato DJ Pro. Before we get started, I'd just like to note that although I'm talking about and demonstrating Serato DJ Pro throughout the video, in fact Serato DJ Lite also shares the exact same library. It's feature limited in some other ways, but in terms of library stuff, it is identical. So all of the things I'll be discussing in this video will apply to Serato DJ Lite as well as Serato DJ Pro. So we will start at the beginning. If you're new to BeatSource, you're going to need to get some music into your BeatSource library. So I'm just going to add a playlist in. Now I have a bunch of playlists there already, but I'm going to put a new playlist into my library so that we can see how it works when we transfer it into Serato DJ Pro. So let's go to Spinderella's VIP crates. I'm going to open that one up. And there's 37 tracks in there. We can either add that to an existing playlist, so all of those tracks to an existing playlist, we can add tracks individually to a playlist or create a playlist from that track, or we can just save this whole playlist to our library. So that's what I'm going to do in this case. So I'm going to click Save to Library, 37 tracks all successfully added. Now I can go over to my playlists and actually have a look at that. There it is. So Spinderella VIP Crates. I can edit that playlist from here. I can drag stuff around. I can delete tracks. I can add tracks to it, make it public, all of these different options. But for now, I'm going to leave it as it is. So let's save that and let's head over to Serato DJ Pro. So I've opened up Serato DJ Pro right now. As you can see, I've just got a, one small crate of music in there. No other local music. And let's go over to the preferences. So click on the gear icon. Then I'm going to navigate to library and display. And there we go. Show streaming services. Enable that if it's not on already. BeatSource. Sign up slash log into BeatSource. So I'm going to do that now going to click on that. If you haven't logged in already on the computer, it will take you out to the browser where you put in your username and password. And then I'm going to let that load up my library from there. Now, as you can see, I already have a lot of playlists in BeatSource that I've already played in Serato DJ Pro, and I've got a total of 8,730 tracks there. So we're not going to work with those existing ones. All these ones with the color there that I've changed, that is indicating that I've already analyzed those. They are ready inside my Serato DJ Pro library. But we're going to go to this new playlist from Spinderella. There are some tracks that were already in my library, but some that weren't. So how do we actually now work with these? Well, we're in offline mode at the moment. I don't have any hardware connected. So I can analyze all of these tracks as you would with local files ahead of time. So let's just do this first lot here. And I can choose my analysis settings as I normally would. And then I can drag those tracks to analyze files and it will analyze those. I could also just hit the Analyze Files button and that will analyze all of the BeatSource tracks that aren't yet analyzed within your library. So if I had you know, a good few hundred or something, I could just click that button and it would analyze them all. Now, of course, once it's analyzed, it's like any other track in Serato DJ Pro. So I can pull it up. It's got a beat grid. I can set cues. I can save loops on there. And then all of that information will be saved locally as metadata on your computer. So next time you load that track, that metadata will still be present, the cue points, loops, etc. So that, from that point of view, means that, you know, once you've done it once with a track, you don't have to do it again. Thing is, though, what if you're playing live and you're loading a track that you haven't analyzed ahead of time? Well, that's perfectly feasible, as it is, again, with local tracks. So this one, I'm just going to drag this one to the deck, and you can see the waveform will slowly fill out, and it will analyze that. And there's the beat grid now. And again, I can hit cue points. I can save loops, whatever I want to with that one. The one thing that you will need to bear in mind, and this is something that I, not everyone seems to know about, is that auto gain, when you analyze on the fly like that, is not applied. So you can see this gain knob up here is white. And that means that auto gain has not been applied. Auto gain, you go into the Serato DJ Pro preferences, and there is auto gain. I have that turned on. I think most people do. It just helps level out the tracks volume ever so slightly across all your different tracks. But in this case, it hasn't applied the auto gain because it's done the analysis. But what you need to do is load the track a second time. So load it, have it analyze, and then load it again. And you can see now that gain knob has been grayed out. And that's because the auto gain has been applied. 
Before we move on, I'm going to show you briefly what happens if you lose your internet connection whilst playing tracks from BeatSource. Serato DJ Pro has loaded that track now and it's streaming it from BeatSource. But what's happened is that the software has temporarily cached the entire track. So if I go in now and turn off my Wi-Fi, then that track will continue to play right through to the end. And that means you'll never have a track cutting out whilst you're performing. I know that's something that people are often concerned about when playing streaming music, but rest assured that once a track is fully loaded to any of your Serato DJ Pro decks, it will remain fully cached until you decide to eject it. Another option for your BeatSource settings inside Serato DJ Pro is whether or not you're going to show the curated playlist. So in my case now, I've just got my own open. You know, typically I have such a large BeatSource library, you know, 8,000 tracks in there. I do all my preparation ahead of time. If I want to add in some of the curated playlists, I will do so on the website first. But that might not be the case. You might prefer to really work on the fly like that. So we can just head over to Preferences, Library and Display. Under your music streaming section there, we have that checkbox for Show Featured Playlists. So I'm going to click that now, and then that will add all of the featured curated playlists into my BeatSource library as well. Something to keep in mind with that is that when you do load those featured playlists, so we've got all the top tracks and we've got the curated playlists all loading up over here, that will increase the number of tracks within Serato DJ Pro that are coming from BeatSource. And that might take a little bit longer then to load up when you first open the software or if you log out and log back in again to BeatSource. So as we can see, my track count has gone up from 8,000 odd now to 15,000. So that will take a little bit longer to load. But now, yet yeah, we have these curated playlists over here. So we've got the various ones in the different genres. So we have all of these that we've selected that are the most kind of popular and the most useful for working DJs. And then we also have the top tracks in each genre as well. So there's the top 100 in hip hop, top 100 R&B. And these are just based on popularity. They are literally popularity. So if you want to know what other DJs are playing, that's where you head to the top tracks. And if you want the curated stuff where our curators have really put in the work and created superb playlists for you. Oh, look, there's a good one. Mojax's Funky House Vibes, for example then you can easily work with those. Again, if you're ahead of time, if you're working in preparation, then you can select them all, analyze them, and make sure you've got the beat grids there, or you can just play stuff on the fly as and when you wish. So far, I've mainly been talking about different ways of working with your BeatSource playlists within Serato DJ Pro, and that's a great way of working, of course, but it isn't the full story when it comes to BeatSource, because one of the big advantages of BeatSource is that you have live, on-the-fly access to the full massive beat source catalog right there in your DJ software. Searching for tracks within Serato DJ Pro and using beat source works in a fairly similar fashion to how it does with local files. So for example, I can search within a crate or a beat source playlist. So I can click onto this one, 2022 hip hop hits, and I can search for Drake and up will come all of the Drake results within that crate. I can also go over to the left, click on beat source. And then if I search for Drake there, it will bring up all of the references to Drake inside my entire BeatSource library. But if I want to search both my BeatSource tracks and my local files, I click on the All tab on the left-hand side, and then again, search for Drake in there. And up will come all the results that are my local files and my BeatSource playlist tracks as well. But that's not searching the full BeatSource catalog, so how do we enable that? That's very simple. We go over to the search box in Serato DJ Pro. Next to it on the left-hand side is a BeatSource logo. So you click onto that logo, it turns blue and white. And now when we do our search, it's going to search my local files. It's going to search my BeatSource playlist, all of the stuff that's in those. And as you can see, it's going to start to populate with results from BeatSource from the cloud. So this is all stuff down below that is not in my library at all. And of course, it comes through with the important metadata like the BPM, the key, explicit tags, the genre. So you can now use those fields in Serato DJ Pro to sort by all the different fields and get the results that you actually want for your set and make sure you're getting the right version of the track to drop. One thing to note is that any changes you make now on the BeatSource website, once you're logged in to BeatSource in Serato DJ Pro, any changes you make on the website will not be reflected into this library over here. So if I was to go to the BeatSource website now and add a new playlist to my library, it wouldn't appear here until I either log out of BeatSource in Serato DJ Pro and log back in again, or close and reopen Serato DJ Pro. But it does talk back the other way. So for example, 
we can create a separate crate now. Let's let's build a crate here. So this is your regular crates, smart crates, and this is your beat source crate. So I'm going to make a new one. So I'm going to scroll down, new playlist one. I'm just going to call that demo. And let's say I want to get some tracks in from this Spinderella VIP crates. There's a few that I really like, so I'm just going to pick this bunch here. And now I'm going to drag those into that demo crate. And there we have a new crate and I can sort that again however I want and whatever else. But now if I was to go out to the BeatSource website, which I'll do now, and I'm going to refresh my playlists. So let's go out to playlists and refresh and we'll see that instantly that demo. So anything that you do within Serato DJ Pro to remove tracks, let's say I want to remove a track from the playlist, I want to remove that one as well. So now we have a total of six tracks in this playlist. I'll go back to the BeatSource website, refresh again, and that demo playlist now should have gone from eight to six. So anything that you do in Serato DJ Pro will be instantly fed back to the main BeatSource library. So that's quite a useful thing to know. Often I will do my crate management, you know, my playlist management of BeatSource stuff inside Serato DJ Pro because I find it's a very quick way of working. If I'm in the software already, then it makes sense to just kind of do stuff here. So if I want to make a new crate or just remove tracks from a crate or add them to a crate, I can absolutely do that. So let's now add in a bunch of tracks here. So that demo crate now has 11 tracks in it. Again, I go back to the BeatSource site and we should find it's instantly updated to have 11 tracks in it. But again, any changes I make here on the BeatSource website or in the BeatSource DJ web app won't be reflected in Serato DJ Pro until I either close and restart Serato DJ Pro or I come out to this and log out or just turn show streaming services off and then turn it back on again and then it will reload my library. One of the slight limitations of the integration of BeatSource into Serato DJ Pro is that unlike with some other software platforms, you can't mix BeatSource files and regular files in a crate. So I can't make a crate over here and then drag some BeatSource tracks and some local tracks into that crate and then have that be one crate with everything in it. It just won't work. But there is a workaround for that. If you're DJing, you want to you know, combine some local and streaming tracks on the fly, then you can use your prepare crate. So I can open up the prepare crate, drag some stuff in here from BeatSource or Command P, and then I can go to some local files, go down there, select some of those, Command P, put those into the prepare crate, and then I can sort those by BPM or key or whatever fields you want up here. So that is definitely a way of working with local and streaming files together. Of course, you can't then keep that between sessions. It is just for on the fly, but as a tool to use at gigs, that can be a really useful way of working. One of the best features of BeatSource is the offline locker. So if you're subscribed to the Pro Plus plan, then you have the ability to store up to 1,000 tracks offline so you can use them without an internet connection at your gigs. So I'm going to add some tracks into that now. So let's go into this Spinderella VIP Crates playlist and I'm going to highlight all the tracks and I'm going to drag them to the locker. Then we will see that we have these arrows over to the left and they will gradually fill in, and when they're all solid white, then they are downloaded. Don't make the mistake of dragging a massive playlist over to the locker and then just closing down your computer. Of course, they will take a few seconds to download and actually store those offline. But once they're done, you can then open up Serato DJ Pro at your gig or anywhere else you don't have an internet connection and play the tracks just as you would with regular local music. The last thing I want to talk about is the new feature that was huge news when it was added to Serato DJ Pro version 3.0 a few weeks ago at the time of making this video, and that is stems. That's the new feature in Serato DJ Pro where you can separate the bass, the drums, the melody, and the vocals from your tracks and work with those in the mix in very creative ways. It's a very popular new feature, lots and lots of people using it, including myself. Now, the great news is that your beat source music can be used with stems. There's only one limitation. You cannot take a track from your BeatSource library and drag it to the stems crate on the left-hand side and analyze for stems ahead of time. Now, most of the DJs I speak to are not really using that stems crate very much anyway because the size of the stems files it then spits out is fairly huge. And so if you were to do a large proportion of your library, you'd start to fill up your main drive on your computer very quickly. But of course, you can do things on the fly as long as your computer is up to scratch when it comes to performance, 
then you can definitely have those calculated on the fly. There's one more option to consider there. If you go into the preferences via the gear icon, DJ preferences, you have these options for what happens on song load and you can choose whether on song load the software will analyze stems or whether it will just analyze the stems once you start to use the stems controls. In my case, I generally leave it checked so it will have a performance impact overall, but I know within a few seconds of starting to play a track that the stems feature will be available to me. So we can just start playing a track through and in the background now, that is analyzing the audio and pulling out the stems. And so within a few seconds, we should be able to jump further down into the track and start to see that the stems are available to us. So I can click through onto the vocals there and there we are, it's now analyzed and I can now just work with just the vocals or with just the instrumental. And when you've got hardware connected, you have the option to control all four different elements of the stems right there in your software. So yeah, stems and beat source works very, very well indeed. So there you go, some tips and tricks on how to incorporate BeatSource into your Serato DJ Pro workflow. If you're not a Serato DJ Pro user, don't worry. We will be covering all of the different software integrations on this series moving forward. But why not let us know in the comments which one you'd like to see me cover next. Thank you for watching this episode of BeatSource Basics. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.